Lecture 7. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Virtual University's course on Business and Technical Communication. In the previous lesson, we looked at defining objectives and appropriateness in business and technical communication. Today, we will talk about accuracy, clarity, conciseness and coherence when writing for technical uh, communication. In this lecture, we will talk about the characteristics of uh, effective technical communication uh, and also learn to recognize and cultivate the qualities of effective technical communication. Um, good technical communication is accurate, clear, concise, coherent and appropriate. We have talked of appropriateness, let us now look at the other qualities. In the prose of science and technology, these qualities are sometimes difficult to achieve and not only do science and technology depend heavily on specialized concepts and terminologies, they also make use of numbers and graphics and that is why it sometimes becomes difficult for uh, science, uh, scientific and technical writing to be um, concise and clear to a lot of people. Let us consider an example of technical writing where a lot of scientific uh, terminology has been used. The flow of electrical current can induce the migration of impurities or other defects through the bulk of a solid. This process is called electromigration. In simple electromigration, the force on the defect is thought to have two components. The first component is the force created by direct interaction between the effective charge of the def defect and the electric field that drives the current. The second component called the wind force is the force caused by the scattering of electrons at the defect. Now this is uh, a text taken from a scientific uh, journal and it is accurate in two ways. It is stylistically accurate in its precise use of language and it is technically accurate in its use of specialized terms such as electromigration, charge, electric field and scattering whose meanings are based on the context of a technical discipline. Now both kinds of accuracy, accuracy of phrasing and accuracy of technical concept are very important in technical and scientific and uh, professional writing. Uh, this example that we talk, uh, we just looked at is also clear because it is written in simple direct sentences. Even though it is heavily technical, the terminology is very technical, it is clear because the sentences are direct and they are simple. Although the technical context is specialized, uh, the word order also is simple, it is restrained, the structure is easy to understand. So despite the technical realm of the uh, topic, it is easy to understand. Halanke ye bahut technical concepts hai, technical terms hai, lekin phir bhi jo us example mein likha hua tha, agar usko padha jaye, to usko samajhne mein itta itti mushkil nahi aati padhne wale ko. Part of this clarity is achieved by the rhetorical device of defining a term, electromigration. Ab jo zyada clarity is uh, example mein aayi jo zyada waze ye example hua wo is baat se bhi hua ki electro uh, electro migration ki jo term thi usko define kiya gaya aur uski wajah se kyunki shuru mein padhne wale ko ek definition mil gayi ki ye term hai kya uski wajah se aage jo padha tha us usko samajhne mein bhi aasani ho gayi the example is concise in its use of a minimum number of words to express the basic idea of electro migration and also, it is not wordy, it does not digress from the point. Bohat zyada mushkil alfaz istamal nahi kiye gaye hain. Bohat jahan ek is lav se kam chal jata hai, wahan ek hi lav istamal kiya gaya hai. Ye nahi ki ek lav ke bajaye teen char alfaz istamal kiye gaye hain. Pandne wale ko impress karne ke liye. Kyun uski wajah se phir jo text hai, wo confusing ho jata hai. The example is also coherent because it's de it uh, develops the subject matter in an easy to follow manner. Uh, there is a clear line of thinking. The sentences are linked together by words like this process, the first component, the second component. Ye links hain, uh, the first, the second, this process. Ye refer kar rahe hain aur cheezon ko jo text ke andar hain aur isliye jo padhne wali ki line of thinking hai, wo tootti nahi hai. Jo ek soch hai, wo us text ke andar hi rehti hai aur ye pata rehta hai ki kis cheez ke baare mein baat ho rahi hai. Kyunke clear markers hain text ke andar. Uh, finally, the example is also appropriate to its purpose because it is presenting uh, a description of the process of electromigration. So the way it is written is appropriate because it is obviously meant for a scientific audience. Uh, it's the, read, uh, the writer knows that the audience are educated readers of science and 
they may not be experts in the field of nanotechnology jiske bare mein ye electro migration ki baat ho rahi hai isliye likhne wale ne zaruri samjha hai ki electro migration ko uh, describe kiya jaye kyunki usko ye pata hai ki in readers ko halanki ye science and technology ke experts hain lekin inko इस कॉन्सेप्ट के बारे में शायद ना पता हो लेकिन बाकी फिर मजीद उसने जो टर्मिनोलॉजी इस्तेमाल की उस हर चीज़ को डिफाइन नहीं किया क्योंकि उसको ये पता है कि मेरे ऑडियंस को इनकी समझ आ जाएगी ना वट इज एक्यूरेसी एंड वाई इज इट इम्पॉर्टेंट यू इट्स इम्पॉर्टेंट दैट यू कल्टिवेट एक्यूरेसी इन यू राइटिंग एंड इट्स द केयरफुल कन्फॉर्मिंग ऑफ ट्रूथ और फैक्ट्स एंड इट हैज इट हैज थ्री मेन एस्पेक्ट्स There's document accuracy, there's stylistic accuracy, and there's technical accuracy. अब ये देखते हैं कि ये तीनों accuracies का मतलब क्या है और ये क्यों जरूरी हैं? Document accuracy, stylistic accuracy, technical accuracy. Document accuracy आखिर क्या है और इसकी जरूरत क्या है एक document के अंदर? It refers to the proper coverage of your topics in appropriate detail. जो भी आपका document में topic है, उसकी उसमें कितनी डिटेल है उसको आपने कितना कवर किया हुआ है डिटेल बहुत ज़्यादा तो नहीं है बहुत कम तो नहीं है और एक्यूरेसी कितनी है कित, कितनी सच्चाई है उस डॉक्यूमेंट में ऑफन एंड एक्यूरेट डॉक्यूमेंट नीड्स टू फोकस क्लियरली ऑन अ प्रॉब्लम डॉक्यूमेंट एक्यूरेसी इज जनरली कल्टिवेटेड बाय अ क्लियर प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट एंड बाय प्रिलिमिनरी आउटलाइन ज़्यादातर वक्त डॉक्यूमेंट एक्यूरेसी तभी आती है एक डॉक्यूमेंट uh, में जब जो भी प्रॉब्लम हो वो क्लियरली बताई जाए डॉक्यूमेंट में और एक शुरू में एक उस जो भी आ, लिखा हो जो भी डॉक्यूमेंट हो उसकी आउटलाइन भी दी जाए तभी वो डॉक्यूमेंट में फिर एक्यूरेसी का चांस जो है वो बढ़ जाता है दीज राइटिंग टूल्स हेल्प यू फोकस योर राइटिंग एफर्ट्स बाय रिड्यूसिंग योर डेटा इन अ वे दैट सॉल्व अ थेरेटिकल और प्रैक्टिकल प्रॉब्लम सो बिकॉज दीज आर बेसिकली टूल्स दैट यू हैव इफ़ यू हैव अ प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट और इफ़ यू हैव अ प्रिलिमिनरी आउटलाइन दीज आर टूल्स दैट विल हेल्प यू एज अ राइटर आइडेंटिफाई योर गोल्स बेटर दैट विल हेल्प यू एज अ राइटर मेक श्योर दैट योर डॉक्यूमेंट इज एक्यूरेट एंड दे ऑल्सो सर्व एज अ काइंड ऑफ अ चेक फॉर यू सो दैट यू डू नॉट डाइग्रेस फ्राम योर पॉइंट आप आप जो जो आपके नुकते हैं आप उस तक ही रहें आप इधर उधर कोई और बात अगर करने जा करने लगेंगे तो आप जब अपनी प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट और आउटलाइन देखेंगे तो आपको अंदाज़ा हो जाएगा कि हम जो हैं वो हम पॉइंट से हट रहे हैं ना व्हाट इज स्टाइलिस्टिक एक्यूरेसी एंड व्हाई इज दिस इम्पॉर्टेंट स्टाइलिस्टिक एक्यूरेसी कंसर्न द केयरफुल यूज ऑफ लैंग्वेज टू एक्सप्रेस मीनिंग एक्यूरेट लैंग्वेज रिक्वायर्स द केयरफुल यूज ऑफ पैराग्राफ एंड सेंटेंस स्ट्रक्चर एंड वर्ड चॉइस to describe and analyze your topics effectively whatever uh, paragraph structure word choice uh, sentence structure you are using will affect how effectively you express what you want to say uh, so that then is stylistic accuracy agar aap apne paragraph ko kuch is tarah structure karenge ke padhne wale ko cheez clear na ho ya jo aap kehna cha rahe ho wo paigham na pahunche lekin koi aur paigham pahunche to phir wo डॉक्यूमेंट uh, जो है उसकी एक्यूरेसी कम हो जाएगी क्योंकि पढ़ने वाले को कुछ और मैसेज मिलेगा और आप कोई और मैसेज देना चाह रहे हैं सिर्फ इसलिए कि आपने जो अपने पैराग्राफ को स्ट्रक्चर इस तरह किया है या जो आपने अल्फाज इस्तेमाल किए हैं वो कोई मिसअंडरस्टैंडिंग क्रिएट कर रहे हैं तो फिर जाहिर है जहाँ मिसअंडरस्टैंडिंग होगी वहाँ आपकी एक्यूरेसी कम हो जाती है एज ए राइटर यू गेन कमांड ऑफ एक्यूरेसी बाई स्टडिंग द एलिमेंट्स ऑफ स्टाइल एंड बाई लर्निंग टू अप्लाई दिज एलिमेंट्स टू योर ड्राफ्टिंग रिवाइजिंग एडिटिंग एंड प्रूफ रीडिंग जब आप पढ़ेंगे एक डॉक्यूमेंट को अपने दोबारा या जब आप उस उसको बल्कि जब पहली बार भी जब आप उसको ड्राफ्ट करेंगे अब आप उसका रफ अपने पॉइंट्स बनाएंगे उसको रिवाइज करेंगे एक बार दोबारा पढ़ेंगे उसको एडिट करेंगे दोबारा पढ़ने में जो भी चेंजेस आपने करने होंगे और जब आप उसको प्रूफ रीड करेंगे कुछ गलतियाँ ढूंढेंगे तो तब आपकी एक्यूरेसी इन सारे पॉइंट्स की वजह से इन चारों स्टेप्स में रिवाइजिंग एडिटिंग सॉरी ड्राफ्टिंग रिवाइजिंग एडिटिंग और प्रूफ रीडिंग के थ्रू आपकी जो एक्यूरेसी है वो आपके डॉक्यूमेंट में बढ़ जाएगी एंड स्टाइलिस्टिक एक्यूरेसी ऑब्वियसली इज आल्सो अ मैटर ऑफ चूजिंग योर वर्ड्स प्रिसाइसली जो लफ्ज बेहतर एक बात को uh, समझा सके वो लफ्ज इस्तेमाल किया जाए तो आपकी जो एक्यूरेसी है वो डॉक्यूमेंट की बढ़ेगी और ये ये भी स्टाइलिस्टिक एक्यूरेसी नहीं आती है ना वट इज टेक्निकल एक्यूरेसी वी लुकड एट डॉक्यूमेंट एक्यूरेसी एंड स्टाइलिस्टिक एक्यूरेसी What is technical accuracy and why is that important in a document? 
Technic uh, technical accuracy requires stylistic accuracy, but is not based solely on it. Ek technical accuracy ka bahut ahem hissa stylistic accuracy bhi hai, jiske baare mein humne bhi baat ki. Lekin iska yeh matlab nahi hai ki technical accuracy aur stylistic accuracy ek hi cheez hai. They are two different things. Stylistic accuracy can be a part of technical accuracy, but not the whole part. The effective document in science and technology must be grounded in a technically accurate understanding and representation of the subject. Khas karke jab hum scientific ya technological uh, explanations ya descriptions deenge, to humare uh, jo bhi document hai, usme zahir hai ke technically bhi jo hum facts present karein, wo sahi ho, durust ho. Kyunke varna to jo hum baat keh rahein, wo kahin se kahin pohunt sakti hai, aur uski jo uh, padhne wale ki samajh ke hisab se bhi kuch uh, galat cheez wo samajh sakte hain, aur jo aap dikhana cha rahein, bilkul aap koi aur cheez bhi uh, dikha sakte ho. Isliye bahut uh, bahut zaruri hai ke jo bhi aap uh, technical terms istemal karein, jo bhi aap technical concepts use karein, ek cheez ko explain karne ke liye wo bilkul vazit aur pe ho aur sahi ho. Technical accuracy depends on the writer's conceptual mastery of the subject and its vocabulary as well as on his or her ability to analyze and shape data with a minimum of distortion. Now obviously if you as a writer do not have, uh, are not a master at the concepts that you are presenting, if you do not know the concepts that you are presenting, then your document will not be technically accurate. तो इसलिए जरूरी है कि जो लिखने वाले हों उनको अपने सब्जेक्ट मैटर के ऊपर उबूर हो ताकि वो जो लिखें वो सही लिखें और इसके अलावा वो अल्फाज इस्तेमाल करें वो भी सही हों ताकि जो भी इनफॉरमेशन आप दें उसमें मिनिमम डिस्ट्रॉक्शन हो मिनिमम गलती का चांस हो एंड दिस इज व्हाई इन साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी देयर इज सो मच एम्फसिस given on uh, mastering this technical aspect of uh, subject development. Jab tak aap jab subject develop ek karte hain, koi bhi topic ko aap develop karte hain, uske baare mein likhte hain, us, iske liye bohat zaruri ho hai ki technical accuracy ho, taake koi galti ka andesha na rahe. Now what about clarity? Why is clarity important in technical writing? Clarity which refers uh, to the ease of understanding is a special problem in technical and professional writing because a lot of the times people find it very difficult to uh, be clear in what they're saying and uh, they either use too many words or they use very long sentences or the information has not been presented properly and therefore it uh, leads to misunderstanding. Uh, specialized languages, mathematically described uh, detailed analyses and complex conce conceptual schemes can make technical subjects hard to grasp even when uh, prepared by skilled writers and read by expert readers because in technical writing there is so much, uh, so much that is difficult to explain and there is so much emphasis on the right language and presenting the concepts in a particular manner. If, if you vary from those, it becomes difficult for you as a writer to explain the concepts and uh, for the reader to understand as well because of the complexity of uh, what you might be explaining. Uh, and you can increase the clarity of your material by uh, either using uh, structural clarity or stylistic clarity and or con uh, contextual clarity. Generally you would be uh, striving for all of these structural, stylistic as well as contextual clarity to uh, make your document more clear. Let's have a look at what these are. What is structural clarity and why is it important? At the level of the whole document, you can promote structural clarity, making it easy for the reader to get the large picture. So this is from the large part of the document. We're looking at the whole document and seeing how we can use structural clarity to make the general image of the whole document more easily accessible to the reader. Uh, you should use abstracts and other forecasting strategies such as introductions that state the purpose and scope of the document or uh, table of contents etc. And because these add to the structural clarity of the document. Basically structural clarity ka matlab ye hai ke jo document ka structure hai usko hum is tarah improve kare ke padhne wale ke liye asani ho. Jo us, jis tarah humne document ko design kiya wa hai wo behtar ho 
और उसमें हम ऐसे एलिमेंट्स डालें जिससे पढ़ने वाले को आसानी हो फॉर एग्जांपल अगर टेबल ऑफ कंटेंट्स है तो वो देख के पढ़ने वाले को आसानी होती है पता करने में कि क्या चीज़ कहाँ लिखी हुई है या अगर एब्स्ट्रैक्ट है या शुरू में एक इंट्रोडक्शन है तो वो ज़रा एक टूल्स मिल जाते हैं रीडर को ना हाउ कैन यू प्रमोट एज आई सेड टेबल ऑफ कॉन्टेंट्स प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट्स इवन स्ट्रेटिजिक रेपिटेशन प्रमोट स्ट्रक्चर क्लैरिटी बहुत बार ये होता है कि हम बहुत सी चीज़ें जानबूझ के रिपीट करते हैं वैसे तो एक डॉक्यूमेंट में uh, बेहतर है कि रेपिटेशन ना हो क्योंकि आपके रीडर्स बोर हो जाते हैं लेकिन अगर आप रिपीट कर रहे हैं तो बहुत स्ट्रेटिजिकली रिपीट करें चीज़ और ऐसे पॉइंट्स पे करें जहाँ आपको लगता है कि इस चीज़ को एम्फोसाइज करना है और ये चीज़ आपकी स्ट्रक्चरल क्लैरिटी जो है उसको बढ़ाती है ग्राफ्स एंड टेबल्स इफ दे आर इफेक्टिवली डिज़ाइंड एंड इफेक्टिवली प्लेस हेल्प फोकस and uh, they also clarify information they help the reader in focusing on particular uh, information they also help you as a writer in emphasizing particular information to jo agar aisi information hai jisko aap emphasize karna cha rahe hain to usko aap tables ya graphs mein dale aur usse aapke jo material hai uska focus badh jata hai descriptive titles and frequent subject headings guide readers and they help them in keeping the larger picture in focus तो जाहिर है आप बहुत ज़्यादा नहीं लेकिन जहाँ ज़रूरी हो वहाँ टाइटल्स हेडिंग्स जो हैं वो बहुत हेल्प करती हैं एक डॉक्यूमेंट को पूरे को स्ट्रक्चर करने में जाहिर है बहुत ज़्यादा अगर हेडिंग्स होंगी और हेडिंग्स के नीचे बहुत कम डिस्क्रिप्शन होगी तो वो बिल्कुल मुनासिब नहीं है हेडिंग्स वहाँ होनी चाहिए जहाँ मुनासिब हों ना ये कि खामा खामे हेडिंग्स डाली हुई हों ना वट अबाउट स्टाइलिस्टिक क्लैरिटी वाई इज़ दैट इम्पॉर्टेंट Stylistic clarity is promoted by simple direct language, uh, and this simplicity in language is obtained uh, with directly worded sentences. The word, the sentences should be in direct speech. They should be addressed directly to the reader, and th- this simplicity then promotes stylistic clarity. Uh, the sentences should be simple, and they should not be overloaded with information or words. Uh, so that clarity can be increased word choice is also a factor in fact a very important factor in stylistic clarity uh, you should use simple language wherever possible and try to reduce abstract highly specialized terms of science and technology especially if you feel that the audience is not going to understand it if you feel that the audience is expert and they can understand the scientific and technical language then use simple words to counteract to balance out the scientific and technical language so having talked about structural clarity and stylistic clarity let's have a look at contextual clarity and what we mean by that uh contextual clarity in which the importance authorization and implications of your work are made available also contribute to ease of understanding all work has a context and your readers want to understand what the context of your document is zahir hai aapka jo bhi document hai wo kisi context mein likha gaya hai kisi ne aapko kaha hai likhne ko us ya aap kisi ek koi reason hai jiski wajah se aap wo document likh rahe hain us document ko likhne ki kuch implications bhi hongi uska kuch result bhi hoga isliye ye sari cheeze jo hain ye bahut zaruri hain ki aap samjhe as a writer ताकि आपके पढ़ने वालों को भी क्लियर हो कि आपने क्यों लिखा है किस कॉन्टेक्स्ट में लिखा है और आपके डॉक्यूमेंट जो है वो क्लियर हो थिंग्स विच कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू कॉन्टेक्सुअल क्लैरिटी आर क्वेश्चंस लाइक व्हाट इज प्रॉम्प्टिंग यू टू राइट व्हिच बेसिकली मींस व्हाई आर यू राइटिंग वट इज़ योर पर्पज वट डू यू होप टू अचीव थ्रू दिस राइटिंग हुज वर्क हैज प्रोसीडेड Uh, uh your writing and it ha- whose work has influenced you any uh, was there any work done on this topic or this area before you which has influenced you that is important because then you will need to refer to that um, or maybe you will assume that your readers know of that work what is the organizational and intellectual context uh, of your problem uh, that you're writing about now you can achieve contextual clarity by answering all these questions in your introductions problem statements and in your citations and references etc uh you don't have to allude to them directly all the time but you need to be clear about them and you need to make sure that they are somehow 
that your introductions and uh, citations, etc., are somehow answering all these questions. You provide answers to these questions in introductions, uh, problem statements, citations, and other references. But this doesn't mean that you need to write about them or you need to answer them directly all the time. A lot of the times you will just allude to them or you will just refer to them, but you need to be clear yourself what you are referring to so, so that your purpose, uh, what is prompting you to write uh, any work that has influenced you and the context of your problem is clear to the reader as well. What about conciseness? Why do we consider that important when we are uh, uh, writing uh, technical documents? Why is it important to learn the strategies of conciseness? Why does conciseness have such a special value in technical fields? Writers are often tempted to include everything that could be relevant to the subject or everything that they know uh, in the document rather than merely uh, including things that are relevant to the communication task at hand. So a lot of the times as writers we are tempted that whatever we know we should show our knowledge and we try to include that. We forget that whatever we might know is not necessarily important for the communication task right now. हमें हमारा बहुत बार ये दिल होता है कि अगर हमें पता है तो किसी तरह ये इस डॉक्यूमेंट के अंदर आ जाए हम इसको कहीं ना कहीं इसको बीच में फिक्ट कर लें ताकि हमारे पढ़ने वाले एक तो ये बहुत बार ख्वाहिश होती थी कि हम हमारा जो डॉक्यूमेंट पढ़ रहे हैं वो इंप्रेस हो जाएंगे कि हमें कितना आता है लेकिन हम ये भूल जाते हैं कि वो शायद हमारे पढ़ने वाले को ये चीज़ इरेलीवेंट लगे और ये जो हम अभी एक डॉक्यूमेंट लिख रहे हैं उसमें इस चीज़ की कोई ज़रूरत नहीं है ये इरेलीवेंट है हमारे रीडर के लिए तो इसलिए बजाय इसके कि वो इम्प्रेस होगा वो हमारा इम्प्रेशन और बुरा ही पड़ेगा सो दे फॉर द कंसाइज डॉक्यूमेंट इज अ पीस ऑफ राइटिंग दैट शुड कन्वे ओनली द मटीरियल दैट इज नीडेड एट दैट पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट एट द लेवल ऑफ द होल डॉक्यूमेंट कंसाइसनेस इज हेल्प्ड मोस्ट बाई फोकस द नैरोइंग ऑफ डॉक्यूमेंट स्कोप टू अ मैनेजेबल प्रॉब्लम एंड रिस्पॉन्स इफ यू एज अ राइटर can find the focus of your problem what it is about your particular topic that you want to write about what is the problem that you want to target and and narrow the problem in its scope not talk about the problem in such a uh, large context or large detail that it cannot be managed in one document you need to narrow it down to a particular focus that will help your document in being concise uh, preparing a clear introduction and developing a detailed outline are two strategies that give you control over document length and scope so if you've got a clear outline point by point aapne ek outline banayi hui hai apne document mein aur aapne introduction shuru mein clear likha hai apne objectives clearly us introduction mein define kiye hain to aapke liye bahut aasani ho jayegi apne ek apne document ko concise rakhne mein aur point se na hate aap ye aapke liye bahut aasan ho jayega Uh, you also need to identify and eliminate material that is not necessary to support your claims agar aap apne document mein koi aisi daleel de rahe hain ya koi aisi cheez wazeh kar rahe hain jiske liye aapne ek uh, additional information di hai usko cheez ko wazeh karne ke liye to bahut zaruri hai ki aap ye dekhenge jo aap additional information de rahe hain apne claim ko uh, wazeh karne ke liye wo kitni zaruri hai wo kitni relevant hai aur kitni detail mein uski zarurat hai bahut baar ye hota hai ki aap लोग ज़्यादा एक्सप्लेनेशन दे देते हैं और इतनी ज़्यादा एक्सप्लेनेशन की ज़रूरत नहीं होती सो so, इसलिए उसको अननेसरी मटेरियल को आपको जो फालतू मटेरियल है उसको आपको हटाना होगा अपने डॉक्यूमेंट में से ऑल्सो यू नीड टू लुक फॉर सेक्शंस इंक्लूडिंग अपेंडिसिस विच आर नॉट एसेंशियल टू योर वर्क अगर आपके कोई भी सेक्शंस हैं कोई चैप्टर्स हैं पैराग्राफ्स हैं अपेंडिक्स uh, में आपने कोई इन्फॉर्मेशन डाली हुई है जो आपके काम के साथ इतनी काम में अपने आपके डॉक्यूमेंट में होना इतना ज़रूरी नहीं है तो बेहतर है कि उसको हटा दिया जाए अगर आपको एक बार भी लगे कि ये चीज़ शायद हमने एक्स्ट्रा लिख दी है तो उसको कम कर दें ग्राफिक्स आर अ पावरफुल एड टू कंसाइसनेस बिकॉज दे कट डाउन ऑन वर्ड्स दे कट डाउन ऑन द अमाउंट ऑफ प्रोज दैट इज़ नेसेसरी टू डिस्क्राइब ऑब्जेक्ट्स टू डिवेलप योर आर्ग्यूमेंट्स टू टू डिस्क्राइब प्रोसेस दे ऑल्सो हेल्प इन समराइजिंग डेटा and in demonstrating relationships so a lot of the time if you want your document to be concise then uh, using graphs tables figures uh, are is a very good aid is, they are very good tools so you can use them to make your document concise 
and rely less on prose. But obviously, you cannot use graphs for, to explain all kind of material. So, you have to be selective in where you are using graphs and where you are using prose. And also, you need to be careful that the graphics that you are using are actually suitable for the information that you are projecting. How would you make your document more concise? We have talked about graphs. Conciseness could also uh, require careful uh, revising. You would once you have written your document, uh, you need to revise it, you need to go over it once again and you need to then see what changes need to be made. Maybe there is as we talked about graphics, maybe there is text that needs to be replaced for graphs. You might not have thought of it in the first instance. You need to f become familiar with the strategies for reducing wordiness. Uh, look for ways of cutting useless words, sentences, sections from the document. If you feel that you are using too many words to explain one thing, cut that down. If you feel that there are too many sections which are irrelevant or if they are sentences which are too long or irrelevant, you need to cut those down. Coherence is another factor which is very important in uh, writing technical documents and professional documents. Coherence is the quality of hanging together of your writing being together, being stuck together so that it does not seem as if you are writing about different things and it does not seem choppy or it does not seem that you are taking jumps from one idea to another. It is basically providing the reader an easy path to follow. Writers promote coherence by making their material logically and stylistically consistent. Jo bhi aapke material mein information hai, usme uska jo matlab hai, jo logic hai, wo saath saath aani chahiye. Jo stylistic components aap use kar rahe hai, style ki components jo aapki writing mein hai, wo bhi ek jaise honne chahiye. Ye nahi ke aapke ek paragraph mein ek writing style hai, ek tone hai aur dousre paragraph mein dousri tone hai. Ek paragraph ke shuru mein to aap bahut formal the aur by the end of the paragraph aap informal ho gaye hai, to wo aapke stylistically coherent nahi hoga paragraph. Uh, coherence is also achieved by organizing and expressing ideas in specific manner, uh, manner in specific patterns. When we talked about uh, earlier, we talked about uh, using a dividing and alternating pattern of comparison. Now, if you want your document to be coherent, then if you have chosen a dividing pattern, then you will stick to a dividing pattern. If you have chosen an alternating pattern, then you will stick to an alternative pattern for that document. Aise nahi ho sakta ki aap alternating pattern mein teen points to aap alternating pattern mein bataayin aur phir baaki aap dividing pattern pe aa jayein. Wo writer, uh, jo reader hai, wo usse confuse hoga. Is liye coherent document wo hoga ki consistency rahe throughout aapke document mein. And also efforts to emphasize the relationships among the elements of a document strengthen its impact. Jo bhi relationships hai, different elements uh, mein aapas mein ek document ke, different chapters ki aapas mein jo relationship hai, ya different paragraphs mein aapas mein jo relationship hai, agar aap ek effort karein ki wo relationship waze ho, to aapke document mein jo uh, coherence hai, wo bad jayegi. It also increases the reader's ability to understand your topic because it has increased the flow of, uh, of what you have written. It, it improves the readability of your material. Coherence is specially valued in technical communication and writing because of the inherent complexity of the subjects. For uh, uh, writing which is written for uh, lay people, for people who have no expert knowledge, uh, generally the topics are easy. But when it is uh, when writing is done for technical uh, a technical audience, the concepts that need to be explained are more complicated, and therefore it is even more important that coherence is present in your writing that your document is coherent and you use all the strategies we talked about to achieve this coherence. So, that because the um, text is heavy in terms of the content it has, at least if you are writing it in a coherent manner, then it uh, serves as a tool for your audience to understand what you have written. At the level of the whole document, coherence helps to provide the larger picture in which the connections amongst the parts of a document are made clear to the audience uh, by the writer. And it also helps the readers in the sense that it gives them a road map to help them anticipate the content of your work. A lot of the times in your writing you refer forward 
to what you will be writing. आप पहले से इंडिकेट करते हैं कि अगले सेक्शन में या अगले पैराग्राफ में ये होगा या आप वर्ड इस तरह के यूज करते हैं जो या जुमले ऐसे लिखते हैं कि वो पढ़ के पढ़ने वाले को अंदाजा हो जाता है कि जो अगला जुमला है या अगला पैराग्राफ है उसमें इस इस किस्म की बात की जाएगी तो ये फिर आप अपने ऑडियंस को एक मैप दिखा रहे हैं एक रोड मैप उनके लिए बना रहे हैं जिससे उनको पढ़ने में आसानी होती है एब्स्ट्रैक्ट क्लियर टाइटल्स इंट्रोडक्शन प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट ऑल प्रोमोट कोहेरेंस बाय लिंकिंग वेरियस पार्ट ऑफ अ पीस ऑफ राइटिंग इन सब की वजह से एब्स्ट्रैक्ट हो गया क्लियर टाइटल्स आपके हो गया या आपने शुरू में इंट्रोडक्शन डाला हो या प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट आपने क्लियरली स्टेट की हो इन सब की वजह से आपके जो डॉक्यूमेंट है उसकी कोहेरेंस बढ़ती है क्योंकि ये आपके जो डॉक्यूमेंट है उसकी उसके डिफरेंट पार्ट्स की आपस में रिलेशनशिप क्लियर करते हैं और उनको एक लिंक प्रोवाइड करते हैं द पैराग्राफ हाउ एवर इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट पावरफुल इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स ऑफ कोहेरेंस ये जो सारे मैंने बातें जो सारे एरियाज पहले बताए वो भी इंपॉर्टेंट है बहुत कोहेरेंस में लेकिन सबसे ज्यादा जो आपको एम्फोसाइज करना है जिस चीज पे वो आपकी पैराग्राफ कंस्ट्रक्शन और पैराग्राफ स्ट्रक्चर है क्योंकि अगर वो आपका कोहेरेंट ना है ना हुआ या अगर वो आपका टाइटली नेट नहीं होगा तो आपके डॉक्यूमेंट में कितनी भी हेडिंग्स हो एब्स्ट्रैक्ट हो प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट्स लिखी हुई हो कॉन्टेंट्स का टेबल हो कुछ भी हो अगर आपके पैराग्राफ्स अच्छे नहीं है तो आपका जो डॉक्यूमेंट uh, है वो कोहेरेंट नहीं होगा and by organizing material into a topic sentence in a in a paragraph and then in supporting sentences you are pulling the paragraph material together so it's important to make sure that every paragraph has a topic sentence and those topic sentences are then supported by the supporting sentences and so that the various forms of the concept uh, concepts are developed properly तो so, जरूरी है कि जो आपका पैराग्राफ है उसमें एक सेंटेंस जो जनरली शुरू का सेंटेंस होता है जिसको हम टॉपिक सेंटेंस कहते हैं वो जरूर हो क्योंकि उस टॉपिक सेंटेंस से हमें पढ़ने वाले को ये पता चलता है कि इस पैराग्राफ में क्या बात की जाएगी और उससे आपको भी पता चलता है कि आपने इस पैराग्राफ में अपने आप को किस बात तक महदूद रखना है इस टॉपिक सेंटेंस से यह भी होता है कि जो भी आपके कॉन्सेप्ट हैं वो क्लियर हो जाते हैं कि इस पैराग्राफ में क्या बात होनी है और फिर जो सपोर्टिंग सेंटेंसेस हैं जो पैराग्राफ में बाकी के सेंटेंसेस हैं मजीद वो सब इस टॉपिक सेंटेंस से रिलेटेड होते हैं पैराग्राफ डेवलपमेंट इज अचीव पार्टली थ्रू द स्पेसिफिक स्ट्रेटजीज ऑफ एग्जाम्पलीफिकेशन एनालिसिस कंपेरिजन एंड कॉन्ट्रास्ट डेफिनेशन एन्यूमरेशन एंड डिस्क्रिप्शन जो पैराग्राफ्स होते हैं उस वो ज्यादातर यही छह पैटर्न को फॉलो करते हैं या एक पैराग्राफ में एग्जाम्पलीफिकेशन होती है जिसमें एग्जाम्पल्स इस्तेमाल किए हुए होते हैं या एनालिसिस होता है कोई चीज एनालाइज हुई होती है या कंपैरिजन एंड कंट्रास्ट होता है या कोई चीज डिफाइन की गई होती है या एन्यूमरेशन पॉइंट बाय पॉइंट किसी चीज की डिस्क्रिप्शन दी होती है या जनरल डिस्क्रिप्शन एक दी होती है पॉइंट बाय पॉइंट नहीं लेकिन वैसे ओवरऑल कोई प्रोसेस या कोई चीज डिस्क्राइब की गई होती है ऑल ऑफ दीज furnish distinct approaches to develop developing ideas now you as a writer can decide which uh, way of developing a paragraph you wish to use for a particular paragraph zaruri nahi hai ye ke har ke ek document mein sare paragraphs ek hi tarah develop hon balki hargiz nahi paragraphs farak farak tarike se develop honge aur ye cheez us baat pe munasir ho ki ke har paragraph mein kya cheez aap dikhana cha rahe hain aur kis tarah usko express karna cha rahe hain so all paragraphs may have different patterns of development and that pattern will be determined by the content that goes in the paragraph uh, transitional devices also operate at the paragraph level to provide links between sentences and between paragraphs so although it's important for you to be clear in your mind what pattern of organization you're using for a paragraph it's also very important that you use transitional devices so that in the sentences within your paragraph there are very definite links uh, and also you need to uh, use transitional devices between different paragraphs taaki ek paragraph jahan khatam ho aur dusra paragraph shuru ho unme aapas mein koi transition aasan ho koi link ho ye nahi ki ek paragraph khatam hua dusra shuru hua to writer uh, jo padhne wala hai usko samajh hi na aaye ki ye dusra paragraph ka pehle paragraph se link kya hai to isliye wo transition jo hai jahan aap reader ko ek idea se dusre idea pe leke ja rahe hain wo transition bahut zaruri hai और ताकि एक लिंक और फ्लो आपका बरकरार रहे इन टर्म्स ऑफ पैराग्राफ डेवलपमेंट 
writers use enumeration in paragraphs when they want to itemize a list, uh, itemize or list a set of properties or topics or series of some kind. Uh, enumeration is a powerful way to establish a series of observations and to emphasize each element. So, they could be distinct elements that you will list and that you will emphasize by enumerating them in a paragraph. Let us have a look at what we mean when we talk about enumerating. Uh, in this paragraph that we are going to see now, the items are enumerated in a series of itemized recommendations. The, if you have instructions to have your blood cholesterol measured if you have never had it done, uh, finger prick tests at health fairs and other public places are generally fairly accurate, especially if they are offered by a hospital or other reputable health groups. When you know your number, follow these guidelines from the National uh, Cholesterol Education Program. Now, this is an introduction within a paragraph and now comes the enumeration part. If your cholesterol is under 200, uh, 200, maintain a healthy lifestyle including eating a low fat diet, getting regular exercise, maintaining a health body weight and not smoking and get another test within 5 years. If your cholesterol is between 200 and 239, have a second test performed and average the results if that number fa uh, falls in the same range and if you do have uh, any form of uh, cardiovascular disease, change your diet to improve your cholesterol. In addition, eliminate any other risk factors you have and get tested again in about one year. If your cholesterol is 240 or more, your physician should order a more detailed cholesterol analysis and recommend therapy based on the results. You should begin a cholesterol improving diet immediately. Now, if you see in this example, all these three points, if your cholesterol is under 200, between 200 and 239, if your cholesterol is 240 or more, all these three points are listed separately and they, it makes it very clear to the reader that the writer is talking about three different scenarios. So, instead of ha just talking about them generally, the writer has enumerated them, put them as separate points, talked about them in specific detail. There is a link because they are all talking about cholesterol. There is a link to the way they have been written as well. If you notice, the language is similar, the sentence patterns are similar. But the scenarios are different obviously because each scenario is talking about a different cholesterol level, but instructions are following the same pattern. Now, it is not necessary that enumeration patterns are always in bullet form. Enumerated paragraphs could also be in a paragraph form. You do not have to set them aside as bullets or numbers. Uh, you could enumerate things by saying firstly, secondly, thirdly for example, or in the first place, in the second place and that is also enumeration. Exemplification is used to clarify uh, your topic statement and generally exemplification would be used in uh, as examples. In the, in the paragraph that you are going to see, the topic sentence is supported in examples that illustrate, support and clarify the main point. Vitamins and minerals can be added to enrich, uh, replace nutrients lost in processing or fortify add nutrients not normally present, uh, foods to improve their nutritional quality. Bread and cereals are usually enriched with some B vitamins and iron. Common examples of fortification include the addition of vitamin D to milk, vitamin A to margarine, vitamin C to fruit drinks, calcium to orange juice and iodine to table so iodide to table salt. Now, this if you see you can uh, the writer has given examples, the writer has clarified uh, terminology like enrich by giving meanings of uh, by giving in brackets what he means. He is uh, talked about fortify, uh, given a very clear direct link to it and then gone on to examples. He is exemplifying all that he, uh, he is saying by giving you concrete terms, concrete examples that will relate to what he to, what he is trying to say and that will support his, uh, his topic statement that vitamins and minerals enrich and fortify foods to improve their nutritional quality. Comparison and contrast is used to develop a talk topic by examining its similarities or dissimilarities to another thing, uh, similarities or dissimilarities of processes or states etc. Uh, comparison emphasizes the similarities and contrast emphasizes the differences. A paragraph may use both comparison and contrast. Uh, let us have a look at an example where two kinds of electrical cable are compared. The aim here is to convey the superiority of A type over B type. 
for two categories of performers. The heading here is coaxial versus fiber optic cable. So, obviously the heading is uh, it is clear from the title that there is a some kind of a comparison or a contrast being done. And then after colon it says comparative cable length performances. So, here obviously it is even more clear by the use of the word comparative that we are comparing uh, the cable length uh, performances. For a number of critical performance characteristics, fiber optic cable offers considera considerable advantage over standard coaxial cables. The most obvious distinction between the two is the great bandwidth distance capacity of fibers. The high frequency capacity of coaxial cables decreases rapidly with increased length, but the bandwidth of a commercial fiber optic system will remain co constant with length. A commercial fiber optic system like that of Artel remains constant for a bandwidth over a distance of 4000 feet, while three different sizes of coaxial cable uh, rapidly drop in less than half the distance. Now this as you can see is uh, a paragraph where the two different types of cables have been compared to each other by looking at different aspects, different elements uh, of, uh, of the cables themselves. The different elements that are present are things like the length the bandwidth etc. And these have been compared from cable A to cable B or the uh, coaxial cable to the fiber optic cable. The use of transitional words and phrases greatly adds to the coherence uh, of a piece of writing and uh, writers need to use transitional words and phrases to clarify and smooth the movement from idea to idea. And let us have a look at some examples. A, a, a paragraph which has weak transition would be something like reducing drag in an aerospace vehicle is an important design consideration with financial and operational consequences. Poorly designed rocket fuselage, scan triple uh, fuel and launch costs. Drag increases stress on key joints. This proposed project will develop a model to reduce aerodynamic drag on the RX 100. Now let us have a look at the same paragraph but with better transitional devices an improved version of the same paragraph. Reducing drag in an aerospace vehicle is an important design consideration. For example, poorly designed rocket fuselage can triple fuel and launch costs. Moreover, drag increases stress on key joints. Therefore, this proposed project will develop a model to reduce aerodynamic drag on the RX 100. Now as you see words and phrases like for example, moreover and therefore have provided better links between the sentences and these are the transitional devices that have been used by the writer to make the writing more coherent. So with this we come to the end of this lecture, uh, lecture 7 where you learnt the importance of accuracy, clarity, conciseness and coherence. Until next time, Allah Hafiz.